Listen to a professor in a history class. Let's continue our discussion of early American history, moving on、uh, from the War of Independence. The war we're going to talk about today had nowhere near the impact of that war, but it did produce one of the most celebrated expressions of patriotic fervor in our entire history: our national anthem. With the possible exception of George W. Bush's Iraq War of 2003. The War of 1812 was the most strongly opposed war in America's history. In fact, Francis Scott Key, who ended up composing the Star Spangled Banner, was among those who originally advocated negotiations rather than war. On the other hand, many people were fed up with Britain's outrageous interference with American transatlantic trade. You remember、uh, that Britain and France were battling for global domination. Well. The British wanted to prevent American goods from reaching France. Eventually, the Hawks won out, and war was declared. As soon as hostilities began, it was clear that America was the underdog. David Hickey says, "The American army was understaffed, poorly equipped, and led by incompetent officers. The British, well, they had the most powerful navy on earth. On the evening of August twenty-fourth, eighteen fourteen, British troops landed in Washington." They torched the Capitol, the Treasury, and the President's house. At that moment, even the most、uh, hawkish members of government may have been regretting their decision. After their success in Washington, the British confidently turned on Baltimore. At the time of that attack, Francis Scott Key was on board a British ship. He had been detained there after negotiating the release of an American doctor, William Beans. Although Key had.、Uh, Persuaded the British commander to release the doctor, they could not return to land right away. They had to remain on the British ship for the duration of the battle. The bombardment of the fort in Baltimore was devastating. Key wrote in a letter,、um, "It seemed as though Mother Earth had opened and was vomiting shot and shell in a sheet of fire and brimstone." Sounds horrific, doesn't it? He couldn't see much of what was going on, although he watched all night from the British ship where he was being held. He saw the red glare of Britain's gunpowder-propelled rockets. He was alarmed by the sounds of British bombs bursting in air. It seemed impossible that American resistance could withstand such a pounding. Now, can you imagine the relief he must have felt when he saw the stars and stripes, not Britain's Union Jack, fluttering over the fort in the morning? That sense of relief inspired our national anthem. Francis Scott Key wrote the Star Spangled Banner right then and there on the back of a letter he pulled from his pocket. Britain conceded. Key and his companions, including Doctor Beans, were released. The next day, Key's poem was printed for public distribution and set to the music of an English drinking song. By the end of the week, the Star Spangled Banner was in newspapers across the nation. So, what did America actually get out of this war? Well, not much,、uh, if you look at it only in terms of territorial gain. However, there were beneficial consequences. Internationally, America gained prestige as a foe to be reckoned with. At home, the defense of Baltimore gave an enormous boost to national self-esteem. You might say that people felt more、uh, American. And were able to set aside some of the political rivalries that had divided the young nation since its founding. Unfortunately, this unified spirit didn't last long. As you'll see, next week we'll discuss the build-up to the Civil War. The long-term legacy of the War of 1812 is, of course, our national anthem. As I mentioned, the Star Spangled Banner was immediately popular and soon became a fixture in political campaigns and Fourth of July celebrations. But it wasn't officially proclaimed the national anthem until 1931. Just like the war that inspired it, the choice was controversial. A lot of people felt the words were too complex and the tune too difficult, and、uh, others protested that a song about military glory and bombs bursting in air was inappropriate. That debate still goes on, but I don't imagine the Star Spangled Banner will concede its place of honor in sports stadiums all over this. Land of the free.